The rogue heir of Elithorn is finally here, with an article that reveals details and a pre-order link. Today this Polygon article was published. Hero Quest expansion leans into replayability, giving players more characters to explore. The best thing about Hero Quest is the rogue. What we have next is this nice picture of the two of them, and this picture comes from a Hasbro Pulse article. Originally launched in 1989, Hero Quest, the cult classic dungeon crawling board game is back been back for a while. The latest edition arrived at retail in 2021 after a successful crowdfunding campaign. Now the designers at Avalon Hill are expanding the line, adding a new hero with unique and powerful abilities. Called the Rogue Heir of Elithorn, the swashbuckling hero will be available at retail starting in October. Pre-orders begin Wednesday, which is today. Hero Quest made a name for itself by being among the first campaigns in a box, a model that is now the most successful board game genres all around. From its humble beginnings on the shelves of local Toys R Us, it is the template for modern masterpieces like Gloomhaven, Descent, and upcoming ISS Vanguard. The original also features several popular and hard to find expansions that added additional monster miniatures, bits of terrain, and even different rules. But the franchise never did branch out beyond the original four heroes, the melee focused barbarian, the spellcasting mage, versatile elf, and handy dwarf. The reboot changed all that, adding additional female presenting sculpts to the game along with additional character classes like the Bard, Druid, and Warlock. Each of those hyperlinks leads to the playtests. Now, Hasbro's board game imprint is adding another class, the Rogue, who's described as a nibble skirmisher deadly with small blades. We knew that already? Let's take a look at this second picture because there's more to it than just the miniatures. Clicking on it, what we have here is of course the lovely box art with the nice big bird symbol there has a gem at the top, looks like two other gems below there. Has a cool looking border, it says the Rogue Air of Elithorn, of course. Two miniatures there, you may have noticed the nice background. There's a rope there, and this appears to be a wooden dock because it's a swashbuckling hero. And we finally know what the cards look like in detail as well. These are the backs of the Rogue skills. We have the front face of the two character cards as well, and another sheet similar to the Guardian Knights that has a little story on it. Besides the fact that they're adorned in nice robes and have fur on their shoulders, I can finally see too that their knee pads are actually birds. I incorrectly said that they were lions last time, and obviously bird makes a lot more sense. They have one attack dice, two defend dice, five body points, four mind points. Their movement is of course two red dice, and their starting weapon is the dagger. While it's difficult to read out this document right here, it does say Kadrit of the Raven's Veil. Vale. Anyone who has played Hero Quest knows that daggers are pretty much useless beyond the opening few missions. Maybe you'll carry one or two around for a handy ranged weapon, but they're basically trash. A rogue character could change that. The new class will also increase your need to manage mobility, a difficult prospect when you're rolling dice for movement. That's because this particular character is prohibited from using metal armor or shields of any kind. Oh, so they rely on their own movement to get out of situations instead of relying on armor to defend. The Rogue Air gave us an opportunity to present unique skills that improved upon two specific challenges large parties can face in the dungeon, said Chris Nadio, Senior Director of Design and Development at Avalon Hill, in an email to Polygon. First, through the use of the Rogue's combat mobility, the character can move through crowded rooms and hallways and attack Zargon's minions from behind. This is the type of thing that I've come to expect from Rogues in Fantasy. They run in there, they do a bunch of damage, and then they run out quickly before they get damaged themselves. This mechanic alleviates those bottleneck situations on the game board, where players may be forced to stand idle while the heroes in front do all the dice rolling. Yeah, I know what that's like, I was playing Barbarian with Kurgan, and that's exactly what happened. Time to roll an entire set of combat dice, just for a single orc. Secondly, through the combination of the dagger and bandolier equipment cards, as well as the rogue skill card Opportunistic Striker, players will be able to make attack rolls at range, and move around the dungeon more freely, while still getting to attack targets almost every turn during combat. A fast, agile, and nimble character seemed like a concept that could really change the way Hero Quest is played. Plus, even more characters are on the way. That is great to hear. We are constantly looking for opportunities to introduce variations in playstyle through the inclusion of new characters in Hero Quest. Like any good game where players can choose from a wide range of classes and archetypes to alter their style of play and generate a sense of replayability. Hero Quest's selection of heroes should reflect the vast world we are building within the brand's story and provide countless hours of repeat play for players who want the most out of the game. This all sounds like more evidence that Avalon Hill wants this game to last for a very long time, and I'm happy for that. Finally, clicking that pre-order link, we're greeted by this Hasbro Pulse page, which is the Rogue Heir of Elithorn, it's for $16.99. Prepare for battle! Independent but loyal to the monarch, 
The rogue heir of Elethorn is a nimble skirmisher deadly with small blades. When you play as this hero, you lack the ability to use metal armor and shields, but you're equipped with your trusty bandolier and are always ready to meet danger head on. This collector's edition item includes two highly detailed rogue heir of Elethorn figures with powers and skills not seen in hero quest characters. It also includes 12 game cards and a story card, featuring an important letter from a secret group addressed to the rogue heir. Includes two finely detailed miniatures, 12 game cards, and story card. Choose your hero, meaning you can play between the female or male one, same as the Guardian Knight. Well-honed fighting skills, combat mobility, ambidextrous, dagger, and bandolier cards reveal unique advantages you acquire when playing as this reluctant yet loyal hero. Now we have the rest of the pictures to go through. This first one we saw in the article. The second one is a 3D view of this rogue heir, the male one at least. He actually has some kind of pouch on the back of him, possibly to store potions in or something like that, as well as some fur reaching around the back of his neck which is the same fur collar that drapes over his shoulders. The next picture is of the tiny expansion right beside the game system box, and we have a picture of the female rogue next to her two cards, the male and female rogue together, which I really like the extra detail on them, especially on their shirts there. It's just added layers that you can actually paint over if you choose to do so. And if this is the quality that we're getting, I would say that this is very good and that people will be satisfied. The box that we saw already further showing that there's crystals on part of the sigil, the back of the box reiterating some of the information that we saw already, with a dock scene in the background, it again beside the game system. Oh, and this might be an earlier version of the box, or something's different here anyways. Because you have the symbol surrounded by the silver and white, compared to what we saw up above, which is this version. Yeah, this is similar to one of the other pictures, but it has information slapped over the top of it. Oh, I see, is this going to be an extra cardboard thing that covers it? as a way to seal it? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, because you can see actually it looks very 3D. Oh, that would explain why it seems different. And besides the box in that same dock environment, that's the end of the pictures. But there's still a video, surprisingly, if you keep scrolling down. And this just might be my favorite video of all these promotional ones that they've ever done. Try as he might, he cannot outrun his fate. Your time has shown me the tale. Besides starting out with a very cool picture of the elf hanging off the ladder, this one seems much more animated than before. And also, something that I love, I don't know what it is about this battle scene, whether it's the screams of people in the background or what, but it's very cool. And I love what they've done here with the abominations actually making thematic sense. Because a lot of people, including myself, had pointed out that abominations don't make quite a sense in a dungeon where there's not really water. But yeah, you have them in the sea, and this makes perfect sense. You can even see him jamming his spear, or glaive thing, whatever you want to call that, right into the shield. Then you have this image of the rogue slicing through them, you can't even see the rogue, but yet it still looks cool. You have him throwing out multiple daggers at once, with the edge of a goblin's face there, and an abomination on the right side too. You see the determination in his eyes as well. Nor can they hide from his elven sight. This is not just a village, this seems to be an established town or city that's burning. So it have even more emotional impact, when even more people are affected by Zargon's dread forces. And prepare to defend our people before we lose everything we hold dear. This was a very welcome surprise from Avalon Hill today, and I'm excited to see what happens at Gen Con tomorrow. I didn't even have time to put out my video about the previous news yet, but that can only mean good things for the feature of the game. Thanks so much for watching, goodbye.